As we mentioned at the top of the show, we're reporting from the 2015 IFAMA conference in St. Paul, where the theme this year deals with food security to 2050. One of the focus areas of that goal is the role of big data as a major key to improving future productivity in a changing climate and with limited resources. We talked with Rabobank's Ken Zuckerberg here Tuesday to learn more about the role big data will play on the farm. Big data is one of those overused terms that means a lot of things to lots of different people. The way we think about big data is it's the plethora of information, both structured and unstructured, that uh, uh, has come about because of uh, uh, information that's transmitted between people, businesses, and the internet from uh, fixed devices and mobile devices. You talked today about the situational analysis of it. Describe it to me. So what we have as respects big data and farming is that there's a lot of companies in the, uh, in the marketplace that are coming up with data intensive solutions to help farmers make more profit. Make more profit can be defined as um, uh, you can do that by either reducing costs of inputs such as fertilizers and chemicals or in uh, uh, having greater yield or a combination. So that's what this, uh, uh, that's what the conversation is about right. today. And you think that there are some elements missing. Am I accurate in that? That's correct. The key elements we think are missing is that while there's a lot of good products out there, there's not one comprehensive integrated solution that will have, that essentially provides a recommendation to a farmer as to where to plant, when to plant, what to plant, and then how to, how to harvest it. Why? Why is that missing? Well, the companies that are at the forefront of precision agriculture connected to data, uh, those companies are inputs companies such as Monsanto and John Deere, and their systems tend to be closed. John Deere farm site has its own cloud, and Monsanto's Climate Corp is also uh, its, its own entity. They don't talk to each other. The equipment and the seed and the seed and the fertilizer are all sort of separate. And to be valuable to the farmer, one needs to really have the complete uh, p uh, picture. Is it possible to have that? I think it is. I think an outside party like an IBM or another technology firm will have to come into the uh, uh, conversation to create uh, the proper structure for success. How do you think the farmer reacts to that? So in my view, the farmer probably would, would react positively to have an independent voice as part of the solution. Because? Well, uh, Monsanto sells seed and John Deere sells equipment. So while their recommendations probably are value added for the farmer, mm -hmm. I think the farmer wants to have that independent perspective from a non-ag uh, player. How skeptical do you believe the farmer is when he or she hears the term big data? So I think they're skeptical and they're probably confused. Mm -hmm. I'm confused and I've been studying <laughs> the, the uh, uh, topic for quite a while. So I think part of the issue is perhaps redefining big data into data technology that enables better farming. Do you think privacy plays a role as we advance? Privacy has been a front and center issue I think it's still a valid concern, but I think more of a concern from the farmers are, re relates to what are you doing with my data and are you going to then charge me uh, for recommendations that are based on the information I give you. I think that's a bigger issue than the privacy per se. To close out with what makes the farmer adopt this technology? So I think three things. I think when the, uh, uh, an easy to understand uh, uh, product set comes together. Second, uh, uh, a, a rationality as to why they should expend the effort uh, learning and, and applying this. And then finally, a real cost benefit analysis. You're not gonna pay uh, $10 per acre for something that uh, uh, doesn't yield tangible result. So it goes back to the money.